Okay, cool. So today I'm talking to Aaron, and I'll give you a chance to introduce yourself. Yeah, right on. I'm uh, Aaron, so I'm a recent grad of uh, UBC Engineering Physics, graduated in 2021, and I've been working uh, about eight months now at a local startup called Terramera, uh, where I'm an electronics engineer. Awesome. So at Terramera, then, what kind of projects do you usually focus on day to day? Yeah, so at Terramera, I'm in the intelligent agriculture uh, department, I guess you could say. So we focus on kind of bringing new technologies to uh, to agriculture, so you might call it ag tech. Uh, so yeah, we look to utilize machine learning, uh, robotics, um, and IoT yeah, into the uh, agriculture business. So yeah, I'm mostly focused on robotics and the IoT side. Um, yeah. Awesome. So then day to day, then like an average day working on these types of projects, what do you usually do? Yeah, that's a good question. So I mean, yeah, right now it's, um, can't, yeah, obviously I can't say exactly what we do, but yeah, we're trying to, yeah, leverage kind of, um, you know, autonomous rovers in agriculture and also these IoT devices. Um, so yeah, basically I do a lot of uh, hardware design, PCB design, um, and also a lot of kind of embedded uh, firmware design. So basically, yeah, writing code, kind of for the microcontrollers we use um, and for our devices. Uh, yeah, so it's mainly kind of ele electrical engineering. Um, you know, my title is electronics, but yeah, basically at the end of the day, that's just kind of anything electrical engineering based uh, is what I do. Okay, so then as an electrical engineer then, or with that kind of job, how much of your time would you say is spent between sitting at a desk and doing coding and maybe drafting compared to getting out and actually getting your hands on what you're building? Yeah, no, that's a that's a that's a good question. Um, it kind of comes in ebbs and flows. So recently, we just finished um, a big design cycle for one of our uh, robotics projects, um, and when that happens, you're in the office all the time, actually building out what we designed. Uh, so that was, I mean, it was good to, yeah, you know, it's always fun to not have to work from home and go into the office. Um, so yeah, that was really fun building that out, testing it, making it work. Um, so kind of for about two to three months, it was like pretty much every day, kind of, you know, hands-on building, testing. Uh, but now since we started a new design cycle for our V2 of our robotics project, now it's more at home on the computer uh, where, you, where you plan stuff out, spec everything, do the designs. Um, but that'll change in the, in the next coming months, kind of once we shift from the, once the designs are validated and we start building, it'll shift. So at least in my role right now, um, yeah, it kind of comes in those waves where, kind of, I guess, so the start of design cycle, you're at home, at the office, specking stuff out, doing kind of the design on the computer um, and testing. And then once that's all validated, uh, you actually go to the building. Um, so yeah, right now we're a small team. Um, so kind of, you know, you, myself will, I'll also, you know, I'll be designing, but also building stuff. Whereas like from other experience, um, you know, I, I did a 10 month internship at Tesla. So that's obviously a way bigger you know, way more manpower where you would more kind of only do one thing because there's other teams that, right? There's other test teams and stuff like that, other build teams. So yeah, it's kind of the benefit um, of working in a small company. I like it, might not be for everybody, but yeah, working in a small startup is that you kind of are expected to wear more than one hat and be kind of involved in every aspect of the, of the design process from kind of uh, concept ideation to actually like production. Yeah, that's one thing I've heard from pretty much every engineer I've talked to is that small companies, you get to do a bit of everything. Big companies, you're kind For of sure. restricted. And then also the ebbs and flows as well in every different discipline of engineering. Civil, summertime is construction time in a lot of cities because mm -hmm. it snows in the winter. And then electrical or mechanical depends on where you are in the project cycle. So it's cool to hear that. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, that's actually a good point uh, with, with the civil engineering. Um, yeah, that makes sense, right? Stuff most likely gets built in the summer when it's not, you know, snowing and stuff like that. But yeah, so yeah, same kind of thing. Just kind of if you're on, yeah, that small team, you kind of uh, pick up the slack and just kind of, kind of, yeah, do it all. Okay, cool then. So what would you say if you can think back to maybe a more challenging day that you've gone through, kind of maybe where you had a problem they had to deal with? Like, can you think of any examples of that that you'd like to share? Yeah, I mean... I'd say, you know, kind of every day as an engineer, you're trying to solve problems. And I mean, there's, yeah, definitely in kind of eight months I've been at uh, Terra Mera. There's definitely been a few kind of problems that, you know, I myself haven't necessarily been solved outright kind of thing. And I'm, it, usually when that happens, it's, I mean, just from kind of lack of understanding or lack of experience, but luckily, yeah, we, we have a good team with, um, 
yeah, with people with lots of experience. So, I mean, it's just kind of when you kind of hit that wall, just, yeah, it's all about reaching out, asking the right questions earlier, um, you know, rather, rather than waiting. So, I mean, a lot of it too is, um, you know, this, my role as an electronics engineer, I didn't really, you know, I never had that title before kind of thing, right? So I've learned a lot on the job as well. Um, so kind of, it's kind of realizing that when you do run into these problems that it's not necessarily that you suck at your job. It's just like, there's other people, different experience. And I mean, everyone's there to help each other. So um, yeah, I feel like there's been, you know, plenty of times when I run into a problem where I need to call in reinforcements. Um, and, you know, luckily, usually it's just kind of a, a quick, you know, a quick call on teams and, and, we, and we chat it out and draw it out, then, then the issue kind of uh, resolves itself. So I think it's just, um, yeah, knowing when knowing when you're kind of out of your league a little bit and you need to ask the right questions, uh, but also just also understanding that maybe I just need to look into this for, you know, an hour or two more and I'll figure it out myself. Yeah, no, that's great advice. It's really helpful for pretty much anyone in any career, I feel, not being afraid mm -hmm. to reach out and also dig a little deeper for yourself. Yeah, for sure. Because, I mean, you know, there's one thing, because, I mean, yeah, everyone kind of, everyone wants to impress and, and, and show their value. But, I mean, there's also kind of that that humbleness of not waiting two weeks and then, you know, your supervisor being like, so how are you doing? And you're like, oh, I hit this wall. And they're like, oh, really? You should have told me that last week. I could have helped you kind of thing, right? So yeah, just kind of, um, yeah, finding those checks and balances of knowing when to ask for help, um, just asking the right questions kind of thing. And yeah, not being afraid to, because no matter in your, you know, in your school, in your, you know, in your work career after, you're going to run into those issues where something may be over your head and you need to, yeah, kind of ask for help externally. Okay, awesome. So then what would you say are some pros and cons you've experienced then by choosing this or choosing electrical engineering as your career path? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, that's, that's a good question. I mean, I think, I mean, pros, I mean, to me, like in, um, yeah, in, in engineering physics, we kind of do classes, mechanical, electrical engineering, um, computer engineering, and other math and physics courses. Um, and to me, I just, I just enjoy kind of more the electrical aspect of it, um, you know, whether it be kind of programming, wiring, stuff like that. Um, to me, that just kind of was more exciting in a way, um, maybe just because, I don't know, everything today is, is digital, everything's di digitized, not that there isn't a need for, you know, mechanical and all the other engineers, but to me, that's just, um, yeah, kind of working in the, I guess, in the tech scene, right? It's kind of software or it's hardware in that sense um, of kind of what's driving these innovations. So, I mean, yeah, I just kind of like, um, yeah, just to me, the challenges and kind of also the capabilities, right? Um, I feel like in the past 10 years, it's pretty incredible what a few lines of code can do right it, it's kind of endless um, and also that challenge where some people kind of see an electrical system as a black box right stuff goes in stuff goes out no one really knows how it happens so just kind of enjoying um yeah kind of understanding and designing that myself um and then the cons i mean not really um you know too many cons i would say kind of one in terms of a career based is um you know working I chose to work in Vancouver. I did have job offers, two uh, full-time offers at Tesla. Um, and obviously down in the Bay Area, you know, it, it's more money. It's, you know, you get paid USD. It's all the kind of the, the Silicon Valley uh, lifestyle, I guess, which some people really like. I, I didn't really enjoy that. Um, so, I mean, I think the only con, I guess, is sticking in Vancouver. It's just the reality of the industry. Um, you will get paid. I mean, yeah, you will get paid kind of the industry average for Vancouver, whereas if you look elsewhere down south, it's just more money. And that's just the nature of the beast. So I'd say that's the only con that is kind of out of my control in that sense. Um, you know, I, I'd say like for um, industry standards in terms of like um, entry level jobs in Vancouver uh, with all like the new big tech firms coming in and successful startups that we're seeing in Vancouver those wages are going up which is awesome to see um, but yeah you'll never kind of catch what you can get paid uh, down south and not that everything you know has to do with money but it's just yeah again that's probably my only con of um, maybe electrical engineering if I want to make more money maybe I should have done computer science or something like that I'm not sure. Yeah, no, like staying in Vancouver really is kind of nice, especially having gone away and you get to see the differences, like money can't really buy certain For things. For sure, yeah, and, and that was something that really, um, you know, as a third year, second year engineer, 
had I know one day I get a job offer at Tesla to go full time, I probably at that time would be like, oh, of course, I'm going to take that. Right. It's like the Silicon Valley is where it gets stuff done. But then after experiencing it, I mean, the work was really interesting. I really enjoyed my time there. But just in terms of lifestyle. Um, yeah, just um, and, and and I guess city, too. I mean, Vancouver is one of the best cities in the world for a reason. Right. It's uh, yeah. So that's definitely why I want to stay. Okay, cool. So then what would you say then some advice you'd give to students who are considering going into electrical engineering, maybe how they could prepare for it or how they could get a little bit of experience and trying it to see if they like it? What would you say to them? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. You know, I mean, I'm, uh, I just hear, I remember doing um, kind of the the applied science open houses that they do and kind of standing at the engineering physics booth talking to prospective high school students be like oh I really want to do eng phys or even first year uh, engineers and you know I feel like the stuff they're doing in high school these days are all doing they have like robotics classes for like coding classes and I never had that in high school I wish I did um, so I mean I feel like that in a great sense if you're interested in engineering and technology getting that exposure right away is awesome I mean you know I feel like every engineer today has you know had their hands on, on on an arduino type thing right so trying that or i mean there's lots of free online um you know cad software too if you think you might like mechanical uh engineering but i mean i feel like you really won't know in a way once once you're there if that makes sense um like kind of for me out of high school i i love chemistry and i thought i want to go and pursue chemistry in university go to UBC first year sciences in chemistry and I hated it right I couldn't stand it so I was like oh my god like what am I going to do with my life but then kind of just talking to people and you know hearing about all the cool stuff they're doing in engineering kind of that's what brought me back to be like oh that sounds awesome like you know how how can I um yeah how can I kind of restructure my life to kind of go pursue engineering um so yeah I kind of took you know really about three to four years before I started uh, before I actually got back into engineering. Um, so yeah, I think just kind of, if you think you're interested, just go talk to people, come to these um, AppSci open houses, go to each booth for all the different engineering, um, you know, disciplines, civil, mechanical, entries, every, right? There's like 12 now or something like that. I'm not too sure what the new ones have added. So yeah, I think just talking to people um, at these open houses is a really good way to kind of know what um, yeah, kind of what the stuff you learn and also kind of what the industry is like too, right? Because obviously ideally, you know, ideally you go to school and you have, you know, you can make a career out of it after a career that you enjoy. So yeah, kind of knowing what the industry is like, the job prospects is really no, uh, yeah, good to know. So yeah, just, just talk to people. And also, I mean, if you're first year engineer and you're on LinkedIn, feel free to reach out to engineers that, that, that um, yeah, engineers that you find kind of in your network. Cause I mean, yeah, it seems like, cause I've definitely done it. I've definitely done it, reach out to a lot of people and just see, kind of ask them, oh, hey, was it like working in this company? What do you like? What do you don't like? And the majority of them are, you know, very nice and, and answer pretty honestly. So, yeah, just talk to people. Oh, sorry, I think you're muted. Yeah, I think I muted myself. Yeah, okay, yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, no, that's really solid stuff. One last question for you and yep. then let you go. Maybe it's something a little fun. When yeah. you started working at any company, maybe where you're at right now, maybe at Tesla, what was something that you encountered that you didn't expect in the workplace? Like what kind of surprised you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, I think kind of high level, um, you know, university, I mean, this might, I don't know, this might be kind of a controversial subject, but I, I think university does prepare you for the workplace because the workplace is very similar to university in the sense that like, at least for me, when I was at university, a lot of the times I'd walk into a class and be like, oh my God, I have no idea what's going on. Like, what is this? And then you'd have to like research it and study it, right? And at least in my experience, the workplace is very similar, especially if you, you know, again, my experience is really only in tech, but when you're trying to do stuff that's never been done before, there's no kind of like, you know, there's no guide of how you do it, right? Some of those classes you have to, you know, research start the fundamentals and kind of and kind of build yeah build your tech technical uh, aptitude up so i think that's kind of something that um yeah that surprised me because obviously you know I, I did internships throughout uh throughout my years in university um and yeah i was like oh yeah this is like maybe this is what 
real work is like once you're a full-time engineer and now that i am it's like oh yeah it's pretty similar to what i was doing when i was an intern um you know now it's just kind of you have the more responsibility you don't have that nice blanket as an intern obviously you have more responsibility and more accountability but at the same time kind of general of kind of getting stuff done if you don't know how to do it you you look it up you research similar to kind of you know what it is in school although a lot of the times there's no chag page chag page with the answers or whatever stuff like that but um yeah same kind of thing so yeah i think just i think yeah at least the you know the ubc the yeah i think ubc engineer as a whole um obviously i can just speak for engineering physics but yeah i think it prepares you very well for kind of what the workplace is in my experience just because it, it kind of gives you the tools to tackle problems that you really you know don't really have any experience with um so yeah and also another one i guess um elon musk is a lot taller in person um when you see them in in person instead of in pictures but yeah other than that um yeah university the workplace i think there's yeah there's some good parallels there okay well awesome i really appreciate you taking the time today to come share your experiences and yeah yeah thank you a lot of people are going to appreciate it yeah no worries thanks for reaching out alex